What is up everyone? Welcome back to another video today. And in this video, I'm going to be trying out a new series called Model Comparisons. I've seen a couple of other people do this before, so I figured that I would give myself a test on this as well. So, yeah, basically the whole thing is, is that you just compare models of similar types. And for me, it'll be the Embraer 170. Now, most of you know I do not try to get duplicates of models. I try to avoid that best I can, and I know some people that will obviously do it, whether it be for a large model airport that they're doing, like, say, Dallas or Minneapolis or Los Angeles. You know, those big airports, they'll sometimes have, like, three or four of the same aircraft down on the ground simultaneously, and having one will not be enough. So I try to avoid duplicates best I can, but sometimes I'll have the same aircraft type that are pretty much identical, so this is one I'll be having here with the Embraer 170. So I have a Gemini Jets one and a Herpa one to compare in this video. So go ahead and take a look at each aircraft individually and then we'll start the comparison. First up we have the Delta Connection Embraer 170 by Gemini Jets. This exact aircraft is November 867 Romeo Whiskey. Uh, first flight date unknown. It was first delivered to Shuttle America on June 5th of 2006. Transferred over to Republic Airways on October the 9th of 2009, then went back to Shuttle America on June 6, 2011, five years and one day after it was initially delivered to Shuttle America. Then on January 30th of 2017, Shuttle America ceased operations, it was absorbed into Republic Airways, so the aircraft went back to Republic Airways the next day on January 31st of 2017, which coincidentally is the day that I posted my first plane spotting video, so how neat is that? And then just some basic information about this model. This was initially released in, I think, the April of 2016 batch, and I picked this up in Christmas of 2017 with an unfortunate sequence of events, which resulted in the horizontal stabilizer breaking off in the box. So whether that was a shipping issue or a manufacturing issue, I have no idea. So go ahead and take a look at the box. We'll move the model out of the way to bring you closer to the box. So on the top here, you got the Gemini Jets logo, made for collectors by collectors, image of the plane, the Delta Connection, the Delta logo, Embraer ERJ-170, even though it's technically called an Embraer 170, you got a little Delta widget there, the flap for look inside, so there's the plastic in there, and then there's the aircraft information. As you can see here, you're free to pause this video if you wish. Uh, flip it over to the back, so there is the back of the box, this says 2016 as expected, as real as it gets information, plane taking off, and the Gemini Jets logo. And here's the right side of the box there, Gemini Jets logo. Uh, image of the plane, Embraer 170, uh, 1400 scale, diecast model. I should bring my pencil in. Item number is GJDAL1245. And then here is the top, which has a barcode, because I actually did order this off of Amazon, so looks like the barcode has slightly worn off from the about five years or so that it has been in my collection. And here's the bottom of the box and the top as well, standard Gemini Jet stuff, so you know to drill with those. So yeah, um, as I said, I picked this up in 2017 on Christmas Day. I think it was Christmas Eve that I unboxed it, and unfortunately this horizontal stabilizer right there was broken. So that's all I have for that one. We'll move on to the Herpa. And here is the Herpa model that I have, the United Express Embraer E170. Now this is the only Herpa model that I have in my collection, which is kind of interesting. The exact aircraft that was made is November 644 Romeo Whiskey. Uh, first flight date unknown, so for some reason the Embraer 170 first flight dates are apparently not available for whatever reason. Um, initially delivered to Chautauqua Airlines. Now I can't, I can't for the life of me figure out how to pronounce that, so I definitely butchered that. But it was initially delivered to them on January 27th of 2005. Transferred over to Shuttle America on August the 4th of the same year, and then went to Republic Airways on January 31st of 2017, once Shuttle America had been absorbed into Republic Airways. So let's take a look here at the box. And as you can tell, the box on this is significantly smaller compared to what we've had previously uh, with the Gemini Jets box that we just took a look at. So up the top, you have the United Express logo, Embraer 170 a little 1400 decal there, and then you just have the opening there, the plastic cutout, so you can see the model inside. Uh, the Herpa logo down there on the bottom right, and then just some text with Herpa miniature model. That's what it translates into, because I think this is German. There is the bottom of the box. you got a real-life image of the plane. Item number is 562-5A4. Embraer E170, I'll grab my pencil here, and the registration of the plane, the Herpa logo, and a 1400 sticker. Um, on this side, you got some information over there, true to scale aircraft and model. Um, there is the barcode there, so that'd be scanned then, at, like if you were at a model shop. And then you have Herpa's website. 
Here's the back. You got a big real life image of the plane, Embraer 170, and that this is a limited edition, which pretty much all these models are. And they got this thing for Wings World, it looks like. Um, let me take a closer look at this because I feel like this is the same one that I know. Um, Herpa, I don't know what that says. I'm trying to read it here. Let me give me a moment. Oh, that's just Herpa Wings Magazine. That's what that is. So they just have a little thing there to advertise for that. And then just some stuff here at the bottom. You're free to read this if you wish. And then this side's pretty much the same, minus the barcode. So, yeah, that's pretty much the box itself. Really, really small. And I don't know why Gemini Jets will not use the regional jet box for their Embraer 170, because this is essentially about the same size as this. So here's my American Eagle Embraer 145 box. And you can see it's just a little bigger than the regional jet box that they always use. So if they can fit an Embraer 145 in this and Herpa Wings can fit an Embraer 170 in this, why doesn't Gemini Jets use this size box instead of the big normal size box that they always like to use? Like, what is the purpose of this? Why do you have to use the bigger box? I feel like that's just, that's just a waste of resources and everything, but whatever, that's just my opinion. So rant over on that, but now that we've taken a look at each model individually, we'll go ahead and compare them and just see what differences lie between these two, and we're not really here to determine which one's the best. I don't want to have like a scoring system in or anything, because I'm not really an expert on that kind of stuff, so I'll leave the scoring stuff up to the experts that actually have quite a lot of knowledge on aircraft and all that fun stuff. So let's go ahead and do the comparison. All right, we're going to go ahead and start off with a comparison. We're starting off at the nose section for each aircraft, so as you can see, um, the Gemini one sits just a little bit higher than the Herpa, so you can see there the landing gear is just a little bit taller than what Herpa has. And what Herpa uses for the landing gear is some type of slightly translucent plastic, and it just doesn't look that great. I'm not really a fan of that, and obviously other collectors of Herpa products, including their 1 to 500 scale lineup, because they have such a huge presence in the 1 to 500 scale market. In fact, I think they're really the only manufacturer in that scale, period. So really they've become complacent from what I've heard and have obviously had a lot of QC issues, kind of like what we have with Gemini Jets in 1-400 scale, even though there is some competition there. So take a look here at the cockpit windows. You can kind of see that there's a bit of a smaller gap between this window and this window compared to what you see there on the Herpa. We'll kind of move along here to the towards the L1 door. So there's the L1 door right there, and there it is right there on the United Express. You can see there's a quite a bit of a size difference there between the two. And then on the Delta, you got operated by Shuttle America down there, which has kind of worn off, but that's just from normal wear and tear. I'll zoom in on that. I actually can't really zoom in that further. That's about as far as I can get. So there you go. But yeah, I have to say the noses are pretty good on here. Um, obviously, the Herpa landing gear kind of ruins it a little bit, and the, sh the shape of it. I mean, the shape of it and everything is okay, um, at least for what, they're, what they've been able to do. And yeah, Gemini just sits a little bit higher. That's pretty much the only thing I have to mention here with this, so we'll move on to the wings. Moving over to the wings here, I'm mostly focusing on the winglets. So you can kind of see that the Herpa sits a bit higher there on the wings, even though that the entire model itself is a bit lower. So you can see the Herpa wing there is a bit higher compared to the Gemini. So I'm guessing the wing angle is a little bit higher than the uh, Gemini one. So yeah, I mean, both winglets are okay. The Herpa's a little thicker, as you can probably tell. The Gemini is much slimmer and definitely looks a lot nicer. And there you can kind of see the winglets in action. You can see the Herpa's got that little uh, light there right next to the winglet, and then the Gemini doesn't really have it because the wings aren't really that thick. Um, but what Gemini really does a good job with is the winglet angle and everything. They get that nice little angle there on the top, whereas the Herpa's a bit more flat. Kind of reminds me of the winglet on like a 737 or something. So it doesn't really look the best. But for what they've been able to do, it looks okay. Now taking a look here at the undercarriage of each model, so the landing gear and everything, and even the engines as well. Both aircraft are the same engines. They're General Electric CF34-8E engines, so I took a look at that. So there's really no difference then in the engines and everything. You can see both of them are pretty good. Um, the Gemini has this longer piece right here compared to the Herpa. You can see that there. Um, but the engine sizes and everything, they're, they're okay. Um, they're definitely accurate and to scale. And you can obviously see the landing gear on this is much different. Herpa's is just plastic and spigot wheels, so they don't really roll or anything. And then the Gemini's, Gemini ones do roll just barely. The starboard side rolls, but the port one does not, and the nose gear does not as well. So that's just kind of what I've noticed. 
And yeah, all the details and everything on the Gemini, they are present, but on the Herpa, there's basically no details. So you can see there, there's just the Herpa logo. Um, some details that are embedded into the mold, and then just a unique stand hole for their Herpa stuff. So I mean, the Gemini one definitely stands out because of all the details that they printed on there. Um, so they definitely took a lot of time to print out those details, whereas Herpa didn't really do anything apart from that. And now looking at the tail section, you can kind of see the tail is very, very similar in shape and size. And again, you can see the Herpa um, sitting a little higher on this one than the Gemini. So the Gemini seems to kind of tilt down a little bit, but thankfully it's not to the point where the model is doing this, where it's just tipping over onto its tail like on some of my 737s, which is kind of unfortunate. I might do like specific model comparisons between um, the same manufacturer, but just different molds, so like an old one versus a new one, that kind of stuff if I do continue this series. But yeah, you can see the Herpa stands a little bit higher, and you have the silver there for the APU exhaust. Um, both of which are pretty good. The Herpa is a bit darker and maybe just a little bit longer. Uh, gets much closer to the tail, which you can see here. The Herpa literally touches the tail, whereas the Gemini does not. And I think where it's not supposed to be touching the tail, I think that is supposed to be the case. And then just kind of holding the wings here, so that's why I see part of my finger there, or part of my hand rather. So you can see the Gemini definitely captures a lot more detail, and then the Herpa, it is there, but it's but the markings there, the engravings rather, they're not as um, there's not they're not as present as they are on the Gemini. So that's just something to note. But they do get the black markings and everything correct. Um, both of them pretty much identical. Wing shape and everything is great as well. It's great to see that both of these manufacturers have made great Embraer 170s, and I definitely recommend both of these. So I'll kind of round out this uh, comparison here. I know it's a little bit, you know, all over the place. I'll definitely have to come up with a more um, strict format to follow. But if you did like this, let me know, and I'll definitely continue doing this. But I just kind of wanted to try this as sort of a test. This probably won't become like a monthly series or anything, but if there is enough demand for it, I'll definitely do more if possible. So really happy with both of these models. Um, I think I did forget to mention with the Herpa, this was released in 2017 and I got this in Christmas of 2019. So kind of an interesting grab to say the least. It is quite rare, but Waffle does have one up on his website for like 39 bucks. So if you really want one of these now, uh, definitely get it. Um, I would like to compare the Gemini one as well because I know Gemini did this exact aircraft. Um, so I'll definitely have to get my hands on that if I can. Otherwise, I am more than happy with the Herpa one. And then obviously the Gemini, where is the Delta Connection Embraer 175? I know I've said that so many times in all of my videos, but where is it? <laughs> like, we, we, we need it soon, um, because there's, there's a ton of them everywhere. They're abundant at a lot of places, a lot of small airports, so it would be nice to have that instead of having to use this Embraer 170 all the time to substitute a 175. And that's the one with the enhanced winglets, not the small winglets. So, that will conclude this video. With that being said, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.